Hello folks, this is Pastor Mike Hoggard, pastor of Bethel Church in Festus, Missouri and head of Prophetic Research Ministry with another Watchman video broadcast coming to you from our top secret broadcasting bunker at 1233 American Legion Drive, Festus, Missouri. Why, are we have to, why do we have to remain so secretive? It's because this is the broadcast that hell hates and there's no doubt in my mind about it because anytime you start pulling the Bible out and start talking about the scriptures and what's going on in the world as compared to what the Bible says, I guarantee you hell doesn't like what you have to say. And I want to start out uh, by reading something and there's, there's several news articles that I kind of have a common theme uh, for today and uh, something that just really, really got my attention. There's one in particular that when I saw this, I just went, oh, you've got to be kidding me. Um, you'll see what I'm talking about here in a minute. And this kind of goes back to the Watchman broadcast we did here a while back on the singularity. About the point at which technology is going to achieve a level whereby machines become intelligent. And humans are fused with machines and all of this stuff. So go back and watch that one. If you haven't seen that one before, it's called What is the Singularity? This is going to kind of dovetail into that one a little bit. And I want you to listen to these verses here. I'm going to read out of Romans chapter 1 and uh, I'm going to be starting here in um, verse 18. Romans chapter 1 verse 18. We'll just kind of work our way down and then I've got some articles I want to deal with in comparison to the word of God. The Bible says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. Now, ungodliness, I mean, that's a real simple term to understand. It just simply means things that are not like God. Things do not have things or people or institutions or anything else in this world that does not have a godly quality, a godly character to it. It is not fashioned after the image of God. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. You've seen our, our video on, the, on uh, Jesus Christ DNA and the Holy Bible and I talk about how the Ten Commandments literally are encoded into our very DNA, into our genes. I mean, we, we, every, everybody knows that if this pen doesn't belong to you and you take it, that's wrong. And everybody knows that. I don't, I don't know of a nation anywhere in the world that has not included in its legal system something that makes it illegal for someone to steal something or to take something that doesn't belong. Well, I take that back. Governments do it all the time. You know, just saying. But anyway, uh, unrighteousness who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Even though our vile bodies are wicked against God, we still have the truth contained in us. I mean, we know what's right and wrong. Now verse 19. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. God is the revealer of himself. It's mankind that chooses to close his eyes and says, I don't want to see God, I don't believe in God, and all this and that. But God is revealed. I mean, he's out there, he's open. Everybody should know about him. Now, verse 20. For the invisible things of, of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead so that they're without excuse. And I'll tell you who else is without excuse. All of you people out there who say, there, there ain't no such thing as a trinity. The Bible doesn't use the word trinity. There's no trinity. Trinity not. That's what they're saying. And I'm here to tell you, there is God the Father, God the Word, and God the Holy Ghost. And if you don't believe that... Well, you need to get you a different Bible. You need to get a King James Bible and actually believe the Bible like you say you believe it. Because I believe that these three are one, is what I believe. And he even says here that you can see the Godhead, which is the Trinity, in, and by the way, this word Godhead, three times in the King James Bible. Okay, just saying, you can even see the Godhead in the creation. How is that, Pastor Mike? Genesis chapter 1, I mean, and, and there's a lot, there's like a billion ways you can see it uh, in the creation. But listen to this verse, Genesis 1 verse 1, in case you're not familiar with it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay, I don't get that, okay? The three elements here, time, space, and matter. 
And so we have time in the beginning. God created the heaven, which is space, and the earth, which represents mass or matter. Because, and you can't do it backwards. You, matter cannot exist without time and space. If you're going to have mass or matter, you've got to have some place to put it in. Okay? If you're going to go to Walmart and buy stuff, you've got to make sure you've got to have a place to put it. And so anyway, we have this order here in the scriptures. Time, space, and matter. Watch this. Time comes in three forms. Past, present, and future. Three. Space, three dimensions. This way, this way, and this way. Three dimensions. Matter, solid liquid gas. Okay? And so here we have this, this idea that God can be seen here in the three things of creation, time, space, and matter, who each in themselves appear in three different forms. God said you could even see the Godhead in that. And here I am, I lost my place in Romans. But anyway, so that, and he says so that they are without excuse. Now I'm here to tell you that this world by and large is without excuse concerning the things that are going on right now. They will not be excused of it. Now, verse 21. Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful. I mean, think about it. The air I just breathed in, God's. He made it. Cup of coffee that I had when I came in this morning, God made the water. God grew the coffee bean. It was God. Okay? All of the things that we enjoy in life, where do they come from? Okay? Dow Chemicals wants you to believe that, that chemicals are making life better. Better living through chemicals. I, that's not really working out all that well, Dow. Just thought I'd let you know. Uh, but anyway, all the things that we have in this life, of course the government would like you, for you to think that everything that's good in your life is coming now from the government. But anyway, all the things that we have in life that are good, they're coming to us from our God. And we ought to be thankful. But here's what people are not thankful. They're full of pride. They think that the things that they have, they got by their own skill and their own work. And they're not giving glory to God. And God will not play second violin in your orchestra. He simply will not do it. He always comes first. And so this is why the wrath of God is going to be revealed. So it says, because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became, listen to this now, this is really good, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Now I want you to listen to this because I want to read some news articles that fit right into this. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Now, I very seldom ever give any Greek uh, when I'm preaching anything like that. But I just learned this one when I was young, and I thought, man, that is hilarious. Have you ever heard of a sophomore, like a sophomore in high school or a sophomore in college? I found out one day when that meant. You, the word sophos means wise. Moros, is where we get the word moron. It means fool. So sophomore is a wise fool. Professing themselves to be so false, they became moros, morons. They became fools, listen to this, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God. Same word here, used to, uh, to apply to the word of God in 1 Peter, the incorruptible word of God. Changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image, into an image made like to corruptible man. Now I want you to focus on that. Everybody focus. Everybody think about this, this idea that they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God listen to this into an image made like to corruptible man and the birds and the four footed beast and creeping things. Now let's get back to this image. of. In fact let me read the story here. Uh, let me bring this back up here. The the incorruptible the the image of corruptible man, and I got to thinking about this because I mean I don't. You might have figured this out if you'd get to know me a little bit better.